Okay, this is the Postman Always Rings Twice trophy for Held Hal Halibut. Um, we are in Chapter 2. We just delivered the blood to Sunny in Chapter 2.1. The Utility District has only just opened, so you can't come here earlier. You can't start this any earlier than Chapter 2. But what we need to do is talk to uh, Buddy to start. Hi there, Buddy. Hey, Buddy. How's the male life treating you? Oh, it's great. Can't complain. But, you know, not quite as spry as I used to be. Oh, is everything okay? Thank you for asking, Harold. I mustn't grumble. Plenty have it worse. What have you been up to today? Just trying to make myself useful. How about you? No deliveries today? Nope. I'm all caught up. So... I'm spending a little time with my treasure trove. Oh, what kind of treasure? Ah, old undelivered letters. Just looking at them makes me feel giddy. But why couldn't you deliver them? Oh, oh. <laughs> believe me, I tried. There's this archaic little Fedora mail delivery protocol stating that mail may only be handed over if the addressee takes receipt in person. And if the addressee is not present, they must collect the mail from the post office within a 12-day span. So, couldn't you leave them a note? <laughs> I thought of that, but a reminder slip is technically classified as mail, and therefore must also be delivered in person. So, this is mail that you couldn't remind people about within 12 days of the first delivery? Almost. You see... For the postman to attempt in-person receipt of a reminder slip, they must also have new additional mail to deliver to the same recipient, else Article 27B-6 classifies it as a personal interruption of duty, and is therefore forbidden while that postman holds his office. But couldn't you deliver the reminder slip after your working hours? You see, I considered that. But Appendix 11 Star states that information gleaned by a postman on duty must never be used for personal gain. And so, technically, once I'm off duty, I'm not supposed to even know that I want to deliver a reminder slip. Oh. So, while I occupy this hallowed office, it would breach regulations for me to deliver them. Or to think too much about them. Even on a personal level. So... There they sit. But it makes me sad, thinking about all those messages going undelivered. Even reading them is forbidden under subarticle 7N. Oh. Now that I think about it, related to 7N is the footnote addendum 7N3 degrees, which states, if I remember correctly, that such mail can be read, but only in the presence of another all-water employee. Oh, great. Moreau doesn't think of herself as one, but she's an all-water employee. You could ask her. Or, since you are her assistant, you're technically an employee as well. So why don't you come in here? I'll open the door. It's the one on your right. And let's finally take a little look at these forbidden fruits, shall we? Oh, okay. I'll take a look for sure. Um, by gum, it'll be good to finally get them home. What have we got here? Darling Arna, when the ship crashed, I half wondered if life as we knew it would collapse in on itself as well. It seemed like the pressure of the ocean surrounding us was pressing through the ship's hull, through to my very soul. And I wondered how I, how any of us, would find a new way to keep going on, even though our home itself had entered stasis. Then I realized something. Maybe it was slowing down reconsidering my lot in life and on the ship. I realized 
that I loved you. That I want to love you. I know you will assure me I'm being foolish, and that you want me to have full happiness, and that said happiness couldn't possibly lie with you. But it does. Now more than ever, we must look within, and I give thanks to whatever celestial whim sent the fedora tumbling down, for it has given rise to my understanding of what is really important. Arna, whether you love me back in the same way, just know I am, and will always be, happy to love you. Forever, you know who. Wow, whoever wrote that experienced the crash. They sure did. Lived and loved through it. Do you think they ended up telling Anna in person? I hope so. I feel like a love that clear would have shined out in person. Mm, maybe they couldn't find the words in person, though. Hence the letter. Perhaps. But something tells me that Anna had someone that loved her unconditionally. So either way, she was a lucky girl. Buddy, didn't you live through the crash too? Sure did, bucko. Hell of a thing. Whoever wrote that love-struck letter was right. Everyone certainly had to readjust. I guess that's when I really grew up and started being interested in people, not just... Uh... Not just... Ah, uh, nothing I want to burden you with. Oh, okay. Tell you what, though. Why don't you come back tomorrow? and we can see what else is in here. Okay, sure. That sounds fun. Laters, buddy. Okay, it's the next day, chapter 2-2, and I just went to Sunny for, no spoilers, what we have to go to Sunny for. So we're going to check in with Buddy again. Hi, Harold. Fancy sitting down to another letter together? Come in through the door. And once you're in the door, you don't actually have to do anything. It, it automatically goes into the cutscene, so you don't have to worry about like pushing the stick or anything. I should have said that on the first one, but I didn't. Shall we check out the next letter? Ready when you are. My little star, Adela. Sorry for not having delivered the following letter in time. I've enclosed the last remaining physical memento of your mother. It's not much, but I figure it's best you have it. Maybe you'll find some insight into your parents that will make you happy. Or give me less of a hard time. Dearest, I will be back soon, but in the meantime, the supply shuttle has promised to deliver you a little... Hello, wish you were here. I didn't have much time to write. They only brought me a new pen with supplies and going back fast. So please find enclosed some of my logbook entries. Made when I had the old pen. So you know what I've been getting up to and can imagine me better. Back soon. Can't wait to see your face. Be good. Day one, touchdown. Planet atmosphere isn't great, but not too toxic. We're able to have brief periods with no helmet and equipment doesn't degrade too fast. First expedition tomorrow. Day two, everywhere this ankle deep liquid, rocky outcrops, the exception not norm it seems. Built out temp quarters on little stilts. It's a great color. Has this rippling sheen like an oil slick, but smells of something like pleasant soap. Not a lot else to see, to be honest. Looking forward to a proper bath already. Day four. Quasi climate seems to have enabled multitude of tiny life forms inhabiting this shallow perma puddle. You can't really see them, but they give the surface of the water this impression of fizzing. Missing B already. Sure, he's enjoying the chance to sit around in underwear and not shave. Lonely here during the long nights. Have intense craving to finish that puzzle we started. B better not have finished it while I'm gone. Amazing. She was on a planetary expedition? Yep. There was only a couple in my time on the move, but apparently they were more common before I was born. Trying to find a new Earth? 
Yeah, but mostly it was obvious it wasn't going to be. But every now and then, one would be worth checking out, in case we could learn or get some supplies from it. I'd always hoped to get to go on one. Oh, yeah. Must be cool to discover a new landscape. What would you do if you'd met an alien? <laughs> I would have made great friends with it, shared the secrets of humanity, and then challenged it to a race. Would you have told people about it? Uh, I suppose so. Would have been a bit selfish of me to keep that kind of thing to myself. Even if... No, never mind. You know, being down here is kind of just like an extra-long exploration mission when you think about it. There might still be so much to learn down here. Ah, yes. Who knows? Chin up, Harold. I'm sure you'll discover plenty of excitement yet. So you can read another one. The trophy uh, has you reading all of them, so you might as well just read as many as you can right now. And you can get two in right now. But you'll have a chance tomorrow to read the rest. Do you have time for another one? Of course. Right. Next one. Let's have a look. Cease and desist. Date redacted. Certified by All Water Secretary 57. FAO, Ms. Novelcorp. Subject, AWC file number 97-68-203-1. It has come to the attention of the All Water Department for unauthorized corporate activity that there has been unauthorized corporate activity concerning Ms. Novelcorp. If that is your real name, Resident at 72 Plaza Row, also known and potentially trading, also unauthorized as Mr. Prangifran, Dr. Comfort, and the like, concerning an unlicensed taxi service via mini-sub. Despite your public adverts, which you will be contacted separately about, no doubt, by the All Water Department for Unauthorized Advertising Activity, claiming that your mini-sub service is more comfortable, luxurious, and reliable than official AW tubes. Such a service is in fact unreliable and dangerous. Therefore, we must firstly insist you cease and desist all mini sub taxi operations. Secondly, you must apply for a permit to operate a mini sub, and a review of our files show that no permit has been issued or indeed applied for. Frankly, we do not see it as likely that you would be issued a permit if indeed you had, or if and when you do, apply for one. This goes on for quite a lot longer. <laughs> Looks like old Nobbly Corb gave them the runaround. Must have been the wrong address. All water don't like people not following the rules, huh? No, sirree, they do not. But I bet you would never take one of those taxis. Noble Corp sounds like a real renegade. Oh, you know me. I thought so. You're so disciplined and... But there may have been a couple of times, when I had a real short delivery window, or I just wanted a change of scenery. Wow, really? Just goes to show, people are always capable of surprising you. We might not always know why people do things, but they usually have their reasons. Noble Corp certainly did. Say, I haven't seen her for a while now that I think about it. So, that was her real name? Oh, it was her favorite, at least. Just like I was her... Uh... Her what? Ah, um, nothing to trouble <laughs> you with. Just getting lost in reminiscing. Anyway, let's call it a day. But come back if you want to keep going down memory lane. Okay, buddy. Be seeing you. Okay, we are back again. It is chapter 2.3. It's the next day. We just checked in with Sunny yet again for a third time. And now this one actually has... I woke up with past post. So this is the come back a third time. Hey, Harold. 
Leisure time again. Come and join me. You know where the door is. been like a month since we last rode. What's the haps? Maybe you forgot your state of mind now. Sorry I took a while, but you probably didn't. You seem the same as always, and being you, begrudge every minute of it. Don't. Learn to say F you to the world once in a while. You have every right. Just stop thinking so much. Thinking, worrying, wondering, doubting, fearing, hearing, hurting. Struggling, lazing, confusing, itching, bumbling, rambling, gambling, hitting, hating, and perching, besmirching. Overthinking and overanalyzing and overguessing separates the body from the mind, and you need them to be one and the same to really produce work that hits people in both. Do. Your work is great, man. You wrote drawing clean, clear, but crazy looking machines. Real nonsense stuff. Nonsense stuff is the best. More nonsense, more crazy, more machines, more clean, more clear. Double down on your Eunice and let you out on your page. Do. Just don't worry about it. If you want to take a month to write me back, that's fair enough. Tell me what you think of that poem I read you. Oh, and before I forget, Rook takes E5. Rook captures the piece on E5. Your move. Doing the yours, Saul. Oh boy, so much wisdom. Those two must have been artists. I suppose so. I just feel bad for their chess match. You got anyone like that in your life, Harold? A friend you can yell at, encourage, Really speak your mind to? Well... Come on now. You don't have to name names. I... maybe kinda? I don't know if they'd consider me a friend in the same way. It takes two to tango. Sure, but what if one of you can't dance? Can't dance? Or won't dance? It's more that... well... I feel responsible for them. And... they don't talk about their feelings much. But I still feel like we really know each other somehow. Is that wrong? Ah, way I see it. You can't worry too much about what other people think. You can never know for sure. So, just be the best friend you can. Kinda like Sol said in the letter. <sighs> I suppose you're right. Thanks, buddy. What about you? Oh, not anymore. But that's okay. Everyone on the station is my friend in a way. Oh, yes. Everyone loves you, buddy. Oh, thanks, Harold. Think it's time for me to recharge my batteries. But you should come back tomorrow if you want. Okay, sure. Rest up. I'll see you soon. Okay, now we're in chapter 4.2, and we're going to interact with the box that we were given at the end of the previous chapter. You can't miss this. It's, okay. it's like forced on you. Time to see what all this is about. Oh, the top one is addressed to me. Hey, Harold. If you're reading this, then, well, it's because I'm not around to tell you myself. These are the remaining letters. I wonder what the recipients would think if you delivered them after all this time. Of course, you may have to read them in order to figure out who that recipient is. As you can see, the addresses or names on the envelopes were damaged or obscured somehow. And don't worry about getting into trouble. According to paragraph 18.5 of the All Water Delivery Handbook, in the event that the senior All Water Post official, that was me, is incapacitated, 
they may designate a junior as delivery proxy. I hereby designate you. By the way, you can deliver them in the same order they're arranged in the box. I took the liberty of organizing them for maximum transit efficiency. Hope you enjoy this little taste of what I had so much fun doing. Now get those knees up high and deliver some joy. Your distant pal, Buddy. Okay, so you're only going to be able to take one letter at a time. You can't take them all. Right. So, but I do recommend once you deliver one to come back because the letters do sort of follow along with who you have to check in with and the story. So it'll be nicer to have the letter with you when you go see the next person for the story part than having to go see them anyway and then come back and get the letter and then go get it. So definitely come get the next letter once you deliver the previous one. So the first one goes to Moreau. Okay. Now you have to interact with her a second time to deliver the Professor, letter. I've got a bit of mail for you. Oh, thanks. Just put it over there with the rest. This one is kind of different. And how do you know that exactly? I'm delivering it for Buddy. It's from Cyrus, from a long time ago. What? Give it here. Let me see. To whom it may concern. That's you, Moreau. I'm writing to formally oppose your newly proposed archiving protocol. The archiving club has operated perfectly well for months using the Arundhati indexing protocol. Implementing a new one now will set back our archiving efforts considerably while we adapt to the new system and re-index the existing archives. Furthermore, I'm afraid if you continue to suspend working with the existing index in a misguided attempt to brute force your own way and to suddenly claim how much better it is as proof the ends justify the means, I may be forced to report this matter to the school council. I look forward to resolving this matter amicably and returning once again to our concurrent archiving efforts. Orderly yours, Cyrus. Oi. That's what he thought. And he must have assumed I'd snubbed him at the time. Surely he doesn't still remember that. Well, either way, can you believe how long we've been carrying on this little grudge? Oi vey. We're still acting like kids. Oh, you're not that bad. Huh, thanks, Harold. I mean, for bringing me this. It helped me realize it's time to put aside our differences. To accept that we'll never see eye to eye. Maybe that's why we achieve so much together. Ah, cool. You and Cyrus are a great team. That protocol was inefficient, though. <laughs> see you in a bit. So the next one goes to Zoya. And Zoya can be found in all water, so in his normal captain's chair area. So we will head there. Okay, we're in all water. And Zoya is kind of easy to miss, so I'm going to include the elevator ride. Just in case you haven't been there yet. Okay, you're gonna have to talk to him first about like ship stuff, and then you can talk to him about the letter. Zoya, I've got something for you. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of a long story, but it's an old letter for you that never got delivered because of All Water's weird rules. Buddy wanted me to finally give it to you. Okay. Odd, but uh, let me take a look. Oh boy, Zoya. 
We just wanted you to know how proud we are of you. Let me tell you a story about when I was a boy. I was listless, about to finish school. Of course, my papa was the original pilot of the Fedora. What a cool job, but what a thing to live up to. And I think I felt somehow ashamed he'd been at the helm when it crashed. So, I decided to do something totally different and get a job in the agricultural district. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't really know what there was to do. But as I looked after the animals, helping tend the crops, I stopped thinking so much about what I wanted to do. I just did it. And as I was just doing, I grew up, I learned, I changed, and then seemingly without any real effort, I felt ready to accept my place as captain. I didn't feel forced into it, and I knew what I would do as a captain with no ship to fly. I had to help everyone else have the opportunity I did to grow at their own pace. Being a captain at large, or at small, means lots of things. You may not always be needed to pilot the ship physically through space, but your position is a symbol of hope, of good leadership, a living embodiment of the idea of using skill and courage to move forwards, whatever the obstacles in front of you. Your old cabin dad. Oh, dad, I never knew. I always thought you never doubted your path in life. Shall I leave you be? No, it, it's okay, actually. You know, it, it's funny. You would think not knowing is scary, but now that I know I'm not the only one to have felt like that, it's actually liberating. And, yeah, some things about my dad suddenly make sense now. Like all those weird job manuals he left lying around. I always thought he was trying to hint to me to start working, but I guess they were his way of understanding other routes through life. Thanks for this, Harold. I'll, uh, I'm just gonna have to sit down. It's a lot to process. Sure, take your time, Captain at Large. I'll see you around, and good luck with everything. Okay, so I'm just gonna include how to get out of here in case this is like your first time here. That's how you open the elevator again. All right, let's go pick up the next letter. Okay, Bridget's our next letter. She is in the cave by the crack, and you will have to talk to her about, like, the setup stuff before you get a chance to talk about the letter. Hey, Bridget. I've got a letter for you. What? Why? Oh, it's a long story. Just... Buddy asked me to, okay? Oh, sure. If it's kosher with Buddy, it's all right by me. Let me see that. Dearest, brightest Bridget, thank you for your letter. I understand. Honestly, I do. But I have to write you this letter anyway. One last appeal. I will give you space. As much space as you need to grow into whatever beautiful flower you need to be. In whichever way you need to bend towards the sun. And my love will burn as bright. But I know it will not be what you grow towards. It will just be there. But of course, Ultimately, this is your decision. My declaration of love is not a question. It's just there. Like the fish in the sea that don't even know they're in the sea. It exists without knowing why or needing anything else. And I will be happy to love you, whatever comes next. Just let me know if you decide to have this love next to you while your own self-love grows too. Tommy. Huh. He took it well after all. You changed your mind? You read this? Uh, I had to just look to know who to deliver it to. 
The front was all blurred. Maybe Tommy got too many tears on it. Ah, uh, it's okay, Harold. This is old news, eh? And it all worked out. I came to realize a few things about love myself, and told him we could try being together, but apart, not too much the same person, you know? So, he maybe thought his letter had helped? That would help explain why he never stopped so much with the grand gestures. Huh. I suppose so. Will you tell him? I think I will. You're never too old to learn something new about love. Okay, the next letter goes to Rafi. They are in the arcade. Oasis Arcade in the arcade. And you'll have to talk to them. You'll have a uh, previous conversation to get through before you can talk to them about the letter. Oh, Rafi, I have something for you. Do I have to take it? Mm, no, I mean, it's kind of official, but not urgent. Okay, I'll take it. Please find below an addendum to your formal offer letter. We realize that the initial contract that agreed to your counter demands, namely, one, a 100 year period of confidentiality surrounding your work for All Water Corporation, two, to be credited as the master of circuitry, three, to not be interrupted, talked to, messaged, or otherwise contacted in any way while in the pursuance of your duties for All Water Corporation was signed prematurely by an AW employee with insufficient security clearance to grant this request. And so we must formally request you terminate the contract in order that we may renegotiate your demands for the period therein, given it may behoove all Water Corporation for some reason to be able to publicly acclaim our engagement of your uh, Rafi Zelter's services. Compromisingly yours, Sanderin Asto, all Water Head of Recruitment. Did you... Well, I had to just to see who... Not a word about this to anyone. My lips are sealed. Okay, the next letter goes to Chris. We are just off from the social district. Ciao, Chris. Ciao, Harold. What's that you've got there? Ooh, is it for me? Well, yes, actually. It's something old, but hopefully you'll still enjoy it. How mysterious. <laughs> well, hand it over. Let's see what the mystic ways of fate have brought me. Chris, it was a pleasure to speak to you about spirituality, cosmic oneness, the relationship between religion and science. And also, I must thank you for your workout tips. I am already seeing measurable improvements in my grip strength and that is my Dorsey definition. I agree that it would be a shame to let matters such as this go by the wayside, despite our community's scientific mission and focus. So as promised, please find attached a number of clippings and notes that will hopefully aid you in your search for understanding and a new signature look. Science spiritually yours. From Lecture on Cosmology and Religion by legendary cosmologist Marty Rees. The church is part of my culture, the rituals, the music, the community, and the compassion. And if I had grown up somewhere else, I would have gone to a mosque or a synagogue for the same things probably. It seems to me that people who attack religion don't really understand it. Of course, bad people do bad things in a good religion's name, but they would do bad things under any name. Science and religion can coexist peacefully, although I don't think they have much to say to each other. From the esoteric research article by the anonymous self-confessed mystic stylist, the relationship between both style and spirituality is not often explored much to the detriment of both spiritual enlightenment and personal beauty. Many monastic devotees, for example, who shave off their hair, claiming minimalism and humility as a way of removing barriers to spiritual growth. But why do we 
associate Jesus with his flowing locks. Looking glam is surely in no way an impediment to feeling glam. The ultimate glam of the universe. The glam that connects us all. Fantastic. This is great stuff. I always wonder why she never followed up. So, they're all clippings about finding enlightenment? Were you looking for a religion to follow at the time? Well, not a religion per se, but something that would help explain my feeling that there were things science couldn't explain or express. I'm still, and will always be looking, I suppose. So this is great inspiration. Thanks so much for bringing it back to me, Harold. No problem. Oh, and, uh, not that it's important, but... How did you come by this? I was helping Buddy with some old mail that had got stuck in the all-water system. Thank him for looking after it all, all this time. Ah, Buddy. Such a true soul. Anyway, I'm going to meditate on this. Thanks again, Harold. Okay, the next letter goes to Major. You'll have to talk to him about um, his flounder, Frank, first. But then you can talk to him about Major, the letter. Major, I have a letter for you. Why do you have a letter for me? I'm helping Buddy. There were some letters that... Uh, it's complicated. He couldn't deliver them, though. So, here I am. Hmm. Seems most unorthodox, and I might add, faintly suspicious. Harold, you're not... Major, this is above board. Just read it. Here you go. Dear Major Sandstorm, I really want to be like you when I grew up. I think you look very strong when you walk around, and I know you keep everyone on the fedora safe by punishing anyone being naughty. I want to do that too! I have a little brother who's very naughty, and I try to punish him to keep the fedora safe. I also like your uniform. It is very smart. Please let me know when I can be your deputy major. Over and out, Jew Main Hunter. Hmm. Respect for authority. No desire to give preferential treatment to his unruly sibling. I wonder what became of young Jermaine. I could certainly use someone of his attitude around here. Perhaps not all kids these days, or well, those days, are as misguided as young Felix. Hmm. It must be different growing up on the Fedora now, though, Major. Being a bit unruly doesn't mean their intentions are bad, right? <sighs> I suppose there's a kernel of truth to what you say. Not that it excuses breaking the rules. But... You've given me an idea. Perhaps I could teach people why I'm strict about the rules. Maybe tell them about what it was like when I wasn't. Thanks for this, Harold. Be good. I'll be seeing you. Alright, the last letter is to Harold. Okay. What have we got here? Dear Harold, me again. Always when you least expect it, right? Well done for delivering all the letters. Very diligent. I'm not surprised, though. I always saw something in you. Similar to me. An inability to leave things undone when you know doing them will make someone happier. You might not be Chris's personal best in the station jog, but you'll always be a buddy champion to me, pal. And maybe you feel like you understand people a bit better now. You learn a lot about people doing this job. Well, I did at least. I mean, I spent pretty much my whole life doing it. And I don't regret a thing. I hope you did anyway. I sense that someone like you, who chose to spend their time reading old letters with an old geezer like me, probably felt like they had a bit of a tough time connecting with people. 
but I'm glad you did. Like I told you before, learning about people is a kind of adventure, a way of exploring lots of little worlds that exist within the Fedora. And it's my belief that even if one of those little worlds looks barren and uninhabitable from the outside, usually when you make contact with it, even if you have to chip away at the surface a bit, or wait patiently for a while, you'll find plenty of life and laughter there. And you learn that life is just like a letter. It can change someone's life, but even the best ones can get a bit lost and need some help reaching their destination sometimes. And when a letter gets delivered, sometimes it's kept around on a bedside table, or it becomes a coffee coaster or a paper aeroplane. The message becomes a smile, a laugh, a scowl, a memory. And the physical form transforms into something else. Ugh. Like me, I suppose. Anyway, don't feel you have to hold on to this letter. It's the message that counts. And unless you really love my workout video, this will be the last time you hear from me. It was a pleasure, Harold. Buddy. Oh, P.S. If you do decide to keep hold of this letter, maybe make it into a paper aeroplane and make Chris race against it. I'd love to beat him one more time. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're going to go take the letter to Chris. Chris is still in the social district. Chris, you got a minute? Oh, hola. What's up, Harold? This is going to sound a little weird, but Buddy has challenged you to one last race. What? Harold, come on. What are you saying? Look at the end of this letter he wrote me. Oh, yeah. How could I refuse? Hold him up and let's have one final station jog. Good job, Chris. You nearly had him there. Ha! <laughs> I gave him a real challenge, eh? You okay? Yeah. Thanks, Harold. I mean, really. Same to you, Chris. That was very entertaining to watch. Ha! <laughs> uh, buddy, making us both smile even now. So at this point, the trophy should pop. I already have it, so it won't, but this is where it should pop for you. <laughs> 